This is video number three covering chapter two of your computer systems textbook. This video will continue section two of chapter two. In this video, we'll address conversion, casting, expanding, and truncating integers. First of all, how do we map between signed and unsigned integers? The answer is simple enough. We just keep the same bit pattern and reinterpret it. Going from two's complement to unsigned can be thought of as converting from the two's complement value and converting it into a bit vector, then converting the bit vector to its unsigned value. We do basically the same thing to go from unsigned to two's complement. Converting from unsigned value to the bit vector and then converting that bit vector to two's complement. Again, for both of these, we just keep the same bit vector and reinterpret it. This diagram shows the values of signed and unsigned integers associated with nibbles ranging from 0000 to 1111. Notice that for all values that have a most significant bit of 0, shown in green, the unsigned and 2's complement values are identical. Once the most significant bit, remember this is the signed bit, is 1, the values change the plus or minus 16 indicates the difference between the values of the bit vector when interpreted as one or the other. We can add 16 to go from signed to unsigned, or subtract 16 to go from unsigned to signed. We use 16 in this example because we are looking at nibbles, which can have a total of 16 unique bit patterns. So if we were using two bits, it would be plus or minus four, and if we were using eight bits, it would be plus or minus 256. Since the most significant bit is the sign bit, the largest possible positive weight in an unsigned integer becomes the largest possible negative weight in a signed integer. We want to keep this in mind so we remember that counting is a bit different between the two. In unsigned, going from 0, 1, 1, 1 to 1, 0, 0, 0 just counts from 7 to 8. Whereas going from the same bit patterns from 0, 1, 1, 1 to 1, 0, 0, 0 in signed takes us from a positive 7 to a negative 8. So let's cover a few things about how signed and unsigned integers work in C. By default, integers are considered to be signed. We append a suffix of u to specify that we want an integer to be considered unsigned. Explicit casting between signed and unsigned work just like our u2t and t2u functions from our previous slides. Please go ahead and try these lines of code in a little C program of your own just to see what it looks like in code. Implicit casting can also happen in assignments and procedure calls. Try some of these on your own to investigate implicit casting between signed and unsigned integers. What we find is that there is a mix, if there's a mix of signed and unsigned integers in a single expression, signed values get cast to unsigned. This happens with comparison operations such as less than, greater than, etc. as well. Take a look at this table of some values that show what happens when implicit casting comes into play. In the first row, 0 is equal to 0 whether we are using signed or unsigned, so that's no surprise. But because the second zero is unsigned, the expression is evaluated as two unsigned values. The second row shows us something that could come as a bit of a surprise. The negative one is implicitly cast to one since zero in constant two is unsigned. So the whole thing is evaluated as unsigned and our negative one ends up being greater than zero. Row three shows a simple signed evaluation of two signed numbers. Again, no surprises with that one. Finally, row 4 shows us a situation where we could look at the numbers and think that the relation should be less than, but remember that when we cast the unsigned number in constant 2 is cast to signed, the most uh, significant bit comes into play, the signed bit comes into play, changing it from a large positive number to a large negative number. So the relationship between constant 1 and constant 2 is the opposite of what we may expect. So to quickly recap how we cast from signed to unsigned, we maintain the bit pattern and reinterpret. This can have some unexpected effects as we saw of in a couple of examples on the last slide. 
It's also important to remember that int is cast to unsigned in an expression containing a mix of both signed and unsigned integers. So what happens when we want to expand an integer? We might want to convert a short int to an int or an int to a long int, etc. This one is actually really easy. We can just perform something called sign extension, which just means re replicating the sign bit as many times as necessary into the new high order bits. So we maintain the current bits as the low order bits of the new representation and append as many copies of the sign bit into the high order bits of the new representation. Here are some examples of what that looks like. As you can see, we just leave the low order bits as they are and extend the sign bit to the left into the high order bits. C automatically does this when casting from a smaller to a larger type. So for expansion, we just add zeros for unsigned numbers and replicate the sign bit for signed numbers. In both cases, there really aren't any surprises. Both will just give you the larger representation of the same number. For truncating, things are a little bit different. For both signed and unsigned integers, we just truncate the bits from the higher order side and reinterpret the results. For unsigned numbers, this works the same as a mod operation. Specifically, if we drop k bits, we are effectively going to get the result of applying a mod 2 to the power of k to the original integer. Signed is similar, but the new most significant bit is the sign bit in the case of signed integers. So this will work as, except, as expected for small numbers, but as we get into numbers that are big enough that the new most significant bit may end up being one, we have to account for the idea that you may end up with the truncated number being different in sign from the original. So you can see the full explanation of how this works in section 2.2.7 on pages 81 and 82 in your book. But this slide kind of shows us the general rules that we want to keep in mind when we're coding. And that does it for chapter 2, section 2 of your computer systems book. In our next video, we'll take a look at chapter 2, section 3, which covers integer arithmetic.